Hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice. So uh, uh, we are here today to present a talk which is Active Record can't do it. Aral can. Hopefully some of you might know Aral. Anyone knows Aral? What is Aral? Great. Okay. Nice. Uh, how many know Rails? <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, I am Vipul. I am Prathamesh. And uh, we are supposed to say that in the other order. But fine. Uh, we work for a company called as Big Binary, uh, which is based out of Miami, and uh, it's a remote company. And we work from different places. Uh, like I work from a, like yeah from a home. Uh, uh, you we like to do a lot of videos, so you can check out uh, our website videos.bigbinary.com. Uh, we do a lot of tutorials. Uh, we are also currently looking for people, so you should check out bigbinary.com/jobs to get an idea of, about it. Uh, also, I don't know if anyone invited you to the conference, so welcome to the second uh, conference dot name. I don't know what that was, and uh, we hopefully read it till the end. Because this is a very big name, I don't know how to spell that name, sorry, say that big name, so that's why conference dot name is pretty easier. Uh, we happen to live at this place called as Pune. Anyone from Pune over here? Yeah. Very rest this time, uh, which is somewhere near Mumbai, and it was like a week back that we started, and it was like just 167 hours that took us to get here. Uh, walking, it was very very leisure walk. <laughs> we traveled more than Constantin, so yeah. <laughs> uh, back in Pune, we uh, we do regular meetups and uh, lots of different events under Pune.rb. So if, if uh, Anytime you are around in Pune, come visit us uh, at our meetups. Uh, we last year started with Deccan Ruby Conf, uh, which is one day con uh, kind of regional conf for Pune, and it's more inclined toward fun. Uh, uh, I don't know. Gautam knows. Gautam knows why <laughs> we do that conf. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Last year, this uh, in this conf, we uh, launched something called as Ruby India. How many of you heard of uh, Ruby India? Oh, quite many. So uh, Ruby India was to highlight content from the Ruby co uh, Indian community, like send out links for submitting CFPs uh, or what different is blogs. in meetups, like yeah, Ruby different meetup meetups or... and all those things. And uh, yeah, do subscribe on Ruby India. Our next issue uh, comes today again. And along with Ruby India in the last uh, RubyConf India, like uh, Deccan RubyConf, we uh, announced podcast.rubyindia.org. So do visit again uh, podcasts where we interview a lot of people uh, in the Indian community. Recently, we interviewed uh, C42. C42? Anyone over here? Niranjan and Sidhu. Yeah. So do check out uh, the podcast, like we interviewed. Uh, Gotham and lot, lot many other people from the Indian community, and uh, yeah, we like to interview them and ask different things about how uh, the Indian Ruby community, how it came into being. Also, this is not uh, Magenta. So uh, that's all about like about what we are going to present. Uh, before I begin, like I'll just let him know. So Pratamesh, I have been working on uh, you know pretty funky things these days, and this is one of the startups that I started called as Packpackers. So I've I've been traveling a lot recently, and uh, you know I've uh, traveled and I like to uh, stay at different places since my job is remote. So I like to uh, I also made a lot of friends uh, who backpack. Okay. That's why backpackers. And you know it's it's an actual company which is registered, and <laughs> I like to do. Uh, so these are some of the things that my startup does, which is you know I help them. I help out. I like to help out my friends in basic task management, finding good locations for. Uh, you know, when they are roaming around in different locations, uh, finding good places to visit, finding good food centers, uh, mm -hmm. because, I don't know. We want food, yeah. obviously. Uh, we don't know what to eat. And finding good and cheap hostels or hotels around. But all of these tasks are like very basic tasks. Every app has it. What is your unique feature? Uh, so we, <laughs> we like to have, we also have many magical features, like, uh, 
you know, luggage is always lost, so we also have this very magical feature called, called as find your lost bag. So anyone who has heard of Arcage lost bag, sorry, Arcage bag, only one person who has the Twitter handle. <laughs> so we also have these magical, fe like magical features which uh, allow us to have these many happy customers uh, who find their bags uh, when they are lost for two weeks, or I don't know. And uh, our customers are mind blown uh, with like our features that are there. So before I go into like the other features, I'll give you an idea of what, uh, you know, I like to use a lot of active record and all those things. So this is something that I have in my app, you know. I have Traveler class which keeps, uh, takes care of reviews and bookings. Okay. I have a task which, is, which belongs to a location, like what I want to do for that particular location. I have a location which will keep information about the location and it will have reviews, it will have different bookings like for okay. hostels. And it can have nearby locations, mm -hmm. which is a self-join on that, on that particular model. I'll also have bookings which are related to locations. Okay. You know, very sophisticated code. And you can't believe it, but I actually have this app right now, and it's in production. Okay. You know, wow. it's, it's actually running. So do visit, uh, do visit my website, which is backpackers.heroku app. So just fire up. I don't know if the instance is running or not, because it's production. Uh, and I actually have live 31 users, uh, which Looks is... like your app is scaling. <laughs> yeah, which is like, I don't know if you have ever seen 31 users in your apps, because it's production, so... I'm what? sorry? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, Everything 10... I, I, okay, I understand 10, but I mean, 10 are like from your company, but 31 is like a lot. And I'm a single person company, you know? Nice. And uh, since I have 31 users on a single Heroku instance, I like to have performance. Like performance is very important when you have 31 users. Right. So I like to scale my app a lot. That's why I use raw SQL, you know, oh, because active record is very slow for me. It's, I don't know. That's why I have very, you know, extremely awesome, feature, awesome queries that I write and very, you know, chilled out. Uh, SQL queries that I use, like something like this. Okay. So, you see, if I have, I have this query over here which does searching for a food, mm -hmm. like searching for a cuisine, uh, if I'm going in some other country and I want to find Indian, Indian food, which is very hard, I don't know if they don't even know what is Indian food. So, I like to uh, have these raw SQL queries that I uh, have in my app, which help me find that. Okay. So you can find, see I'm using I like over here since I'm using Postgres and then I can search for Indian food right. or related cuisine. So this, and this is kind something of works that well. looks. Yeah, yeah, this kind of works well, but you know what? It, it does had work some problems. and it scales. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, but it had some problems. So have you thought about the problems? Uh, what problems? So it has raw SQL, that is the first thing. Then it you has know, some... It, it, has, it has performance, I don't know. Yeah, but... It has some database specific things also, like I like. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to move to some other database, I don't know whether you will move from Postgres to other database, but if you want to, then it will cause problems because sure. that query will not be reusable. So okay. in that case, uh, ARL will help you. Have you heard of ARL? No, what, what is ARL? Uh, ARL is a Ruby library. It, it is used for generating SQL. So it, it is actually based on relational algebra. Okay. It has concepts like abstract syntax tree, nodes, visitors, and it stores that query information in all those AST and nodes, and then it just generates the SQL. So it is used by Active Record under the hood for generating those where chained where clauses. Okay. It is used from uh, Rails 3 onwards. But it has also lots of other features which can help in uh, use cases like yours. And those are not exposed through Active Record API. So, and also, it is largely undocumented. So uh, I know that you might not be knowing about it. I don't fully. know what ARL is. Yeah, but I, I will help you. I will help you how to uh, but change we, your queries. We already have active records. So what, like, why is there ARL or why, why do I need to care about ARL? Uh, well, active record is like full-blown ORM. It does a lot of things. Like, it, it, uh, runs, the, it uh, runs your queries. It converts your SQL result into Ruby objects. It converts them back into SQL. But job of ARL is just to generate SQL, nothing else. So, True. yeah, it, it doesn't even know about your database. It doesn't even know about what your uh, table structure is, what mm -hmm. your columns are. It doesn't know anything. Just generate the SQL. 
So Active Record will actually connect to your database. It will get the columns information. It will get the table information. Give it to ARL. ARL will generate the query. And then it will give it back to Active Record. Active Record will execute it, and you're done. So Makes that's sense. how the flow is. And how, how exactly uh, does this ARL work, and how do I use it? You don't have to do anything for using ARL, because once you include Rails, which includes Active Record, ARL is just a runtime dependency. So once you have the Rails app running, you already have ARL. You in, just don't know about it. Yeah, in production. So for getting started uh, with using ARL, we just have to grab the underlying ARL table object. This is the starting point. Mm -hmm. And once we grab that, then we can build our queries based on uh, whatever attributes that are present in that table. So we can write this convenient method. So uh, Active Record Core class has this ARL table method uh, using which we can uh, we can access the underlying ARL table of that model. And we can write convenient method like this. So location.table will give us the ARL table. So let's see how we can refactor your query uh, using ARL. So here, what we are doing is we are just matching our cuisine attribute. We are checking whether it is uh, matching with India or whatever your search terms are. And it will generate the same query. Nice. And it's, it looks cleaner. Yes. So table of cuisine will give you the attribute. Uh, ARL attribute, this is the basic structure for representing your column. So once you have the table, you also have attributes. Uh -huh. And similar to Cuisine, you can get other attributes, like pricing, location, ID, whatever. All, all of your attributes are possible. And then you, can, you build a predicate on that attribute. So matches any. That attribute should match to your search terms. Got it. And this predicate will ultimately generate an abstract syntax tree. It will store all the query information for this particular clause into that AST. And then we can feed it to your where block. So just like we can pass hash arguments, uh, string to where, we can also pass AST. And uh, Active Record will internally handle how to pass that AST and how to generate query out of that. But yeah, you can, you can basically pass any AST to the where clause, and it will generate the same query. This looks interesting. Yes. And once you run this query with MySQL, it will give you the like query. Oh. So you don't have to write database-specific things. Also, you can extract this predicate into a separate class method, and then you can reuse it. So almost all of your problems are solved. Okay. And it becomes database agnostic. So once you write a query for one, ad uh, one uh, specific use case, it will run for almost all databases. So ARL supports MySQL, Postgres. It also supports Oracle, MS SQL. This looks interesting. Yes. So tell me how you will handle this use case. Let's say the user doesn't want non-vegetarian food. Dude, whatever. I mean, it's, it's, this is pretty simple, you know. I don't know why you're you know, asking me. I just use this query called as, you know, I use not I like. I, right. just, I just have, uh, you know, I have a lot of people who are like you, who are vegetarian. <laughs> so I have this uh, handy query which doesn't, which returns me all the QZ, like places which do not have okay. non-vegetarian food. Yeah, but we can use ARL in this case also. So it's not just limited to uh, generating positive predicate. For every okay. positive predicate, it has a related negative predicate also. So this looks just clean, like eh? match, you, you can use does not match and all kinds nice. of things. So these are all the list of predicates that ARL supports. And uh, one of the uh, interesting feature of these uh, uh, predicates is there are uh, star any and star all. So you can pass array arguments to these uh, uh, these uh, predicates, and it will generate a uh, proper AND, OR, OR SQL for you. So generally, we, we have to kind of uh, juggle around with the strings Adaptive to string possibly uh, like properly right. handle that. But these methods are very convenient. I mean, OK. But you know, this is not, this is very, I mean, you're speaking very simple things. Are, these are very like, you know, small things which are easily done by, uh, you know, a raw SQL or active record. Does ARL allow me to do hardcore things like, you know, I have this uh, query over here, which is do, what is do, trying to do is find locations which have bookings, uh, mm -hmm. and it is trying to find locations which have ratings greater than three. So right. I'm using, you know, pretty hardcore stuff over here, which is joins, okay. and I'm trying to find, uh, do an inner join, because Active Record doesn't allow, I don't know why, to do an inner join on the same table. And then I'm trying to find all locations like, yeah, uh, you have an extra and condition. Yeah, and then I'm find, uh, doing a join on another table, and then I'm also doing an intersect to find all okay. the places which match for this particular query. 
I, I, this is very hard for I don't know. I mean, I don't think Errol will be. Uh, well, Errol really, really shines with the joins, actually. So Errol will uh, okay. can generate any kind of possible complex join very easily. OK, so I will, I will show you how to do that. So uh, t the key to generate queries using Errol is to break down those into smaller parts uh -huh. uh, and then reuse it at the end, like break and then compose at the end to build uh, the final query. So let's solve the first problem. You want all reviews having rating greater than 3. True. So we can use the GT predicate. We are done. OK? True. So now let's do the join. The problem with active record join and why you have to uh, go for uh, SQL was that you have to specify the extra and condition, which was not possible. Right. And um, so uh, active record join method is a bit of magical. Like you just specify the uh, association name. It will figure out which foreign key to match. It will generate the inner join properly. But in ARL, you have to specify each thing uh, as you go. So first you specify on which table you want to join. Which is the review. Yeah, uh, which is the review. Okay. And then you specify on which condition. Like what is your join condition. So uh, if you go to next, then uh, you can uh, specify on which condition you want to join. So this is just a simple predicate that we already saw. Right. And uh, in active record, you are limited to equality predicate for join condition. But here, you can just replace that predicate with any other predicate also, True. Okay, which might not be a common use case, but you can do it. It's possible. And then you can specify the extra AND conditions. So uh, you can specify uh, the extra AND condition for your join. And that, uh, that can be on the review table. It mm -hmm. can also be on the location table. It's, it's like you can specify the, any, any of the predicate that you want. OK, and at the end, we just want to select something from it. So as ARL is based on uh, 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 relational algebra, it has its roots, like uh, it has concepts like projections, which are similar to selections in SQL. So we will project the uh, everything. We, we want to project uh, star. So we do ARL.star. ARL.star ARL .star is just a convenient method for accessing star. And we are not just limited to inner join. So generally, uh, if you want to do any kind of left join or full join um, or outer join, then we have to write uh, raw SQL. But ARL supports uh, other joins also. So the second argument to join function is full outer join or outer join. And you're uh, done. I don't know where you're going, but try to focus. Uh, I don't know if everyone else is following, but I'm <laughs> following over here. So okay. please focus what we were trying to solve. We are not trying to solve the, I don't know what you're saying, outer joins and stuff like that. Try to focus on the query. Yes. You know, focus. Yes, yes, I'm focusing. So. We, we want to get all the locations with bookings and right. all the locations with uh, rating greater than 3. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know what? We have already solved the problem. So the first query is we get all the locations with reviews and whatever your condition. And second is uh, we just want location with booking. We, we are not doing anything magical here. So we can use the active record uh, way of handling the inner join. True. And then combine them using intersect. You are done. Again, intersect is what? Intersect will just intersect the two subqueries. It will generate, like, it will uh, get one AST from Something here, one AST. Here. Yeah, obviously, it's from here. That's why I'm saying you. So it, it gets one AST from the left side, one AST from the right side, and it will intersect that query properly. And you're not just limited to intersect. You can do unions. You can do accept clauses. So not just, uh, and you're also not li just limited to two subqueries. You can uh, run this on any number of subqueries. It's possible. So all I kinds of combinations are possible. for that, but okay, fine. <laughs> well, you're not still convinced with Errol? I mean, fine. This is like, I don't know, very simple stuff. Okay. Joins is okay. Joins is also simple. Uh, let me give, give you a harder one. So I, I have this, you know, hardcore thing, which is called as self-joins. Okay. I'm doing over here, hmm. and I'm trying to find all hotels uh, within five kilometers. Like, People try to, when they try to search, like my friends try to search for hotels, they usually look places where they have malls or they have places to visit. Right. So I have also provided this functionality, you know. I have nearby locations, which I, which is a self join on the right. same right. model. And then I do something like this. I don't know what it is. It's like inner join on the same table. Okay. Try to find locations and location mm -hmm. is less than, the distance between the two locations are less than, you know. Right. Five kilometers or, or whatever. Yeah. And it's, it's like, this is something that only my app provides in the world right now. <laughs> so it's very hard. I don't know you will be able to do something about it. Well, Errol can help you in this also. So Errol has the concept of aliasing. 
you can create alias for different tables using the alias method. And then you can generate the same query back. So in your case, you want nearby locations, right? True. So we just generate the alias for nearby locations. And then uh, the join sources method is the, the alias is referring here. to the same table? Yes, yes. It, it's, it, as it is using the table method, it is referring to location. Same location. OK, got right. it. And then we just, uh, as, as usual, we specify our uh, join condition. And the key here is the join sources method. So what that does is it gives you the underlying uh, errors join representation of that node. OK. It's, it's a bit hard to understand, but just consider that you get errors representation of join. That's it. I, I, don't, okay. I don't care about that. Yeah, we don't have to care about it. We can specify the extra and condition just like we had earlier so nearby locations. Like, yeah, yeah in the, the same one. And once we get that uh, join sources, we get an uh, uh, array of error node joins. We can feed it to active record joins method. Hmm. And so just like we can feed abstract syntax trees to where clauses, we can also feed error join nodes to Active Record joins. Is this something which Active Record uses? Uh, internally, it does. So, uh, as it su supports string joins, as it supports association joins, it also supports handling of error nodes. Okay. That's nice. So, it will again generate you the same query back what you had in raw SQL. Fine. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> but uh, these are all okay. This is also a good feature. But I don't know. I. These are all simple things, and I also have these very complicated things called as, you know, yeah, you're doing making my app secure here. because 31 users are sharing their information with me, so I want to make it secure. So I use very complicated things you can see over here, which is I like to use direct, uh, direct, functions. yeah, encryption functions directly from database because Ruby is slow. I don't know why. So I use these things called as PGCM encrypt. I'm okay. using Postgres, so I'm using those kind of things. Yeah. I'm using the set secret, which is fetching, uh, encrypting it from database, and then uh, 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 like setting the value for the particular field. Or, or I'm using get secret, which is executing again and trying to fetch this by decrypting that particular value. And this is very hardcore. Uh, don't don't fit ARL into this. I don't know why you would like yes. to do that. Yes, I mean any any can any library can't do it. Uh, like ARL also doesn't do it. Active Record also doesn't do See, it. See, I told you. But wait, ARL supports this with name functions. So ARL has uh, this concept of functions, name functions, which can be used as uh, wrappers for uh, our SQL functions. Mm -hmm. So we can wrap the SQL function in a Ruby object, and then we can reuse it for our needs. So your uh, PGP stream encrypt can be wrapped into uh, this name function very easily. You just pass the name of the function, its arguments. Optionally, you can pass the alias. So uh, once you pass the alias, it will generate the proper adds clause. Do okay. this looks like. I don't know. My one was simpler than this. I don't know. This is this is very big. Well, in this case, it can be big. But let's say you want to order your criteria using some uh, some ordering criteria like police. Then mm -hmm. you can generate a function for it, wrap it in name function, and then pass it around for uh, your order clauses. So, I mean, you can reuse it as per your needs. It's not just limited to selections. You can pass it for other active record methods like order also, because. I don't know. In the end, it just generates the AST. So whatever accepts the AST, you can pass it. Fine, dude. I'll, I don't know. You're still not convinced. Fine. OK, so in the end, we covered a lot of things today. We covered uh, kind of complex predicates that are possible through ARL. Uh, we covered combinations using intersections. We covered uh, unions, except. Then we covered joins. Uh, we did all kinds of possible joins that are possible. Uh, and we saw like how to use ARL within Active Record to uh, to enhance it or to use it in our uh, use it to build our queries in more object oriented way. Yeah, if you put it that way, it was. I don't know if for them, but for me it was quite useful. I'll try to. Can you, since my app is very. Can you know, can you uh, take me as a co-founder? <laughs> no. Okay. I need to scale. I don't know with your expertise, I'll be able to scale or no. <laughs> But anyway, this was pretty interesting for me, and I'll, I don't know, I'll try to take a look and maybe refactor my app. It was pretty helpful. I don't know. And uh, also, thanks again. And this is not, again, this is not Magenta either. Thank you. Our code is at GitHub, and you can you can sign up for Ripple services. On yeah. Backpackers. So, sole proprietor of uh, Backpackers, you should check out my app. 
and register and help us get the user count greater than 31. You can register only if you're a cat.